So it's finally happened. After years of rumor and speculation, Apple just officially announced their very first XR headset, the Apple Vision Pro. I watched the two hour Apple keynote and scoured through the press release to find out as much information as I possibly could so you don't have to. In this video, I'll be covering the specs, the price, the release date, and much more, but let's get started by answering a very important question. What the heck is the Apple Vision Pro? So although this device is kind of marketed like an augmented reality device, it's actually a virtual reality device. So traditional AR headsets like Magic Leap or HoloLens, they use what's called optical AR. So you see the real world around you, normally through a piece of glass, and in very simple terms, the headset projects virtual images over your real world view. But optical AR has some significant challenges that are yet to be solved, meaning current AR devices suffer from poor occlusion and low field of view, both of which break the immersion and offer a very limited experience. So what Apple are doing with the Vision Pro is actually VR, but with extremely high quality pass through cameras. So essentially you're looking at a screen inside the headset showing a video feed from the cameras located on the outside of the headset. This pass through method is the same method used in the Quest Pro and the upcoming Quest 3, but the Vision Pro has much higher resolution displays and cameras. A really cool feature that they showed off during the keynote was the ability to use the digital crown at the top of the device to switch between pass-through mode and being completely immersed in a VR environment. Think of it like an AR VR switch. So quickly running through the absolutely insane headset specs, we have 23 million pixels across two micro OLED displays. They state this is roughly around 4K per eye but didn't give an exact resolution number. These displays sit behind three element lenses, which are surrounded by built-in eye-tracking LEDs and cameras. The Vision Pro actually has 12 cameras in total, along with five sensors, including a LiDAR scanner and a depth sensor, along with six microphones. I mean, what do you need six microphones for? For audio, it has a spatial audio system built right into the head strap. The Vision Pro runs on Apple's M2 chip, which is the same chip found in Apple MacBooks, along with a brand new R1 chip, which they designed to gather all the data from the cameras and the sensors. And this is something completely unique to Apple as they produce their own chips. Other companies like Meta, Pico, and HTC, they all rely on Qualcomm to produce their chips, like the popular Snapdragon XR2 chip found in most current gen VR headsets. The Vision Pro will run off an external battery pack, providing two hours worth of use on the go, or if you're at home, it can be used continuously when connected to a power source. What we don't know yet is the exact resolution, the refresh rate, the field of view, how IPD is handled, how heavy it is, if the head strap is gonna be good enough, as all the headsets that I've tried with this single strap design need a top strap to make it comfortable for long periods of use. So something you may have noticed with the Vision Pro is that it doesn't have any controllers. Apple instead are going with a much more intuitive approach with eye tracking, hand tracking, and voice commands instead. They demonstrated this by showing a user highlighting an app with their eyes alone, and then using a pinch gesture with their hand to select it. This means that the device won't really be an immersive gaming device like we have with other VR headsets like the Quest 2, which have fully tracked motion controllers. Of course, it will be able to play games, but it'll be likely much more casual style games using hand tracking and gesture inputs, or iPad games using a traditional gamepad controller instead. One downside to using hand tracking is of course no haptic feedback, but one big benefit of ditching controllers is that just like the iPad and the iPhones, they're extremely intuitive to use to the point where you can give them to your nan or your kid, and they can use them with very little instruction. So we know this isn't really gonna be a VR gaming device, so the question is, what can you use it for? Well, the main use cases Apple showed for this device are centered around virtual screens for consuming content, productivity, and social, using its very own operating system called Vision OS. This isn't a device like the Quest where you'll be jumping around your room with it on. No, this is for putting it on, relaxing, chilling on the couch or on a flight and watching movies, 3D movies and TV shows with your very own virtual screen. 
Now this could be in a pass-through mode so you can see the real world environment around you or in a completely immersive environment. I really liked the concepts that they showed of watching content like the Mandalorian in the seat of your very own N1 Starfighter or having immersive elements of a sports game pop out around the live video feed. Interestingly, this concept is what big screen have been doing for years. So surprise, if you're watching this and you're new to the channel, you can actually do some of this stuff right now with a PC and a VR headset. If you're interested, go and check out my video on big screen, which I'll put up here now. The next big use case, of course, is productivity. This headset is named Pro after all, and the Vision Pro, just like most of the Apple ecosystem, will seamlessly connect to other Apple devices. So it works right away with Apple keyboards and Apple trackpads and also your Mac. The cool thing is all you need to do is look at your Mac with the headset on and it will automatically hand off the display to the Vision Pro, giving you a scalable 4K virtual monitor. And finally, we have social. And I don't mean social VR as we all know it with the likes of VRChat. Apple being Apple, they've integrated the Vision Pro with FaceTime. What's completely wild about this is that you can take the headset off and scan your face with the 3D camera on the front to create a digital avatar of your real face. Kind of like a low quality version of what Meta are doing with codec avatars. This avatar can then be used for FaceTime calls and meetings. I'm sure once developers get their hands on this headset, we'll have loads more interesting use cases, but of course, that's gonna take some time. So for now, it's just what Apple provided. I also wanted to highlight a few things that really stood out for me from the showcase that are completely unique to the Vision Pro that we've not seen in consumer devices before. The first feature is completely wild and it's called EyeSight. This automatically shows you when people are around you when you're inside the headset. And it even displays your eyes on an external OLED screen on the front of the headset that people can see when they're interacting with you. It looks like your actual eyes in a transparent, opaque glass section, but it's actually just a video feed from the internal cameras. This means people can have a more natural interaction with you despite you being completely immersed in a headset. Pretty cool. This next one kind of reminds me of a Black Mirror episode, if I'm honest, but essentially it allows you to capture 3D spatial memories. As the Vision Pro features Apple's first 3D camera on the front, like I said about scanning your own face for your own avatar, it also allows you to record and relive special moments with 3D depth and spatial audio. I mean, it's gonna look super strange you recording moments with this headset on. It's kind of creepy, but I do see the potential benefit here. And finally, we have Optic ID. To ensure that your device is completely secure, you can use your eye's unique iris pattern to securely log into your headset. Completely nuts. So this all sounds amazing, but this is where we all come crashing back down to earth because Apple Vision Pro will be releasing first in the US early next year, starting at an eye-watering 3,499 US dollars. That's an insane amount of money. The one cool thing is that you probably won't need to buy one to try it as Apple state that they'll have demo units available in their stores after release, but just expect a big waiting list as I can imagine everyone is gonna wanna try it. So overall, I think the Vision Pro is probably one of the most interesting tech products I've seen in a long time. I mean, it looks like a product straight from the future. Of course, the price point is just completely insane and it puts this product out of the reach of like 99.9% .9 of people. But as we all know, with super expensive Apple products, like these crazy wheels, there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people that will fork out the cash to buy one. I have to say, I do admire Apple's approach with the Vision Pro. Instead of creating an affordable device with compromises, they've created the very best headset they could possibly make with the technology available. If you want a cheaper headset or a gaming headset, there are plenty of options available on the market. You know, the upcoming Quest 3 looks pretty great at $500, but what Apple are offering is the very best of the best right now for virtual screens and productivity. It's a niche market for sure, but eventually this tech will become cheaper and more accessible to the masses as time goes on. However you feel about this product, a huge player like Apple throwing their hat into the ring in the XR industry is a big deal. And personally, I'm excited to see what developers can cook up with this thing without having controllers. I'll try my very best to get my hands on one and share my full opinions on the channel as soon as I possibly can. But in the meantime, if you enjoyed this quick little roundup video, please leave a like. Let me know what you all think in the comments down below. And as always, 
I'll see you all on the next one. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>